Hi, I'm Michael, and today I'm going to show you how to use a browser and Postman to reverse engineer private APIs on this episode of Hackbyte. For those unfamiliar with what an API is, it's an application program interface. It's basically the messenger that communicates between, say, an app on your phone and the server backend. It takes your request for data and returns a response from the server. Now, these are incredibly common and come in generally two flavors. You have a public API that is well documented, say, something you might find on GitHub, and then you have a private API. It's just not publicly documented and just intended for internal use by an app. Now, what's really interesting about these is they can be incredibly useful if you, say, want to scrape a ton of data from an app or a website, or sometimes these APIs will reveal data that the developers didn't really intend for the end user to have access to, say, precision location information of people that you might be looking at or precision time information that might normally only be visible in 15 minute increments to the end user. Now, if that sounds interesting to you, all you're gonna need for this is a Chrome or Firefox browser and then Postman, which is a tool that we'll be able to download for free from the internet. Okay, to get started, we're gonna first download Postman. Uh, you can go to uh, postman.com slash downloads to find this. Um, you can either download it or you can actually use the web version. I prefer download just because that's what I'm used to. Um, but what we're going to use this for is this is how we're going to interface with the APIs, um, polish them up, play around with them, and then eventually it's going to give us code in whatever language uh, we want. In this example today, I'll use Python. The next thing we're going to want to do is find a website that has some kind of API or service behind it. Uh, so my example today is going to be this, a Lab Gopher. It's a website that consolidates uh, data about servers available on eBay. And here's my goal or my mission for today. Basically, I want to reverse engineer this API because they've already done all the hard work of scraping eBay for me. Now I just need to scrape the uh, data they have. And I want to find the best deals I can on server equipment. So how would I go about doing this? Well, the first thing I'm going to want to do is um, in Chrome, which I'm in right now, right click, then go to inspect. And then we're going to see a bunch of stuff. This is the source code for the page. Sort of interesting, but not really what I'm looking at right now. What I want to look at is network. Um, now, there'll probably be nothing here. So what you're going to need to do is refresh the page. And then we get a bunch of stuff pop up. Now, each of these are every packet of data that's going back and forth to servers um, to populate this page. Now, you can dig through this in a variety of ways. Uh, one of the easiest things to do um, is just sort by type, and then you're, you're gonna wanna look for something interesting, uh, which in our case would be JSON, or uh, JavaScript object notation. Um, that's what a lot of APIs are going to return their data in. Now, unfortunately, here, I don't really see a JSON type. But if I just start looking at these, I can try viewing the response. And eventually, I'm going to find this one. And that right there, if you're not familiar with it, is JSON. It's always going to start with the, the curly brackets. Um, and usually it's going to have something like data, blah, blah, blah. So this is what I'm looking for, uh, this request. Now that I found it, in, again in Chrome, I can go to copy, and then I want to copy as uh, curl. Now, you can also do this in Firefox, and I'll show you how that's done uh, really quickly as well. It's a very similar process. Go to the web page. You're going to get something similar. I'll show right click, inspect. It's got a network tab as well. Looks a little different, but it's basically the same deal. Um, and then you're going to find that same request. I think it was slash US 
let's see. Yeah, here it is down here at the bottom, hiding from us. Pull it over. And, and you can, uh, on both Chrome and Firefox, look at the headers. The headers are the data that the request is sending out. Usually it's stuff like cookies for uh, tracking um, or general information about the um, device making the request. So in here you'll see that it's using Firefox and stuff like that. But again, if you wanna copy the request, it's only slightly different here. You just copy curl, so it looks the exact same. So anyway, we take that copied command and then we're gonna go over to Postman, which we downloaded, and we're gonna go up and import and then raw text and we can paste that curl command. Continue, import. Now we can send it as a test. Ta-da, we get back this big response. If we give it a second, um, you notice that we're in pretty mode, it'll do this. It'll turn it into a much more readable and understandable um, format. Now, as you can tell, data, okay, makes sense. Then we just have a bunch of numbers here. This is about the worst case scenario you can run into when you're reverse engineering uh, a private API or an API that isn't publicly documented. Basically, the whoever programmed this website, they know that since this is in a list, these positions are gonna stay the same all the time. So they, in their mind, in their code, they've just written, okay, you know, the, the zeroth position is whatever. And then the nth number position is this data. But unfortunately, since we're trying to reverse engineer that, we don't really have access to that um, knowledge that they intrinsically have. In theory, we could go into the source code and maybe like figure out what it's doing with this. Um, that's certainly one way you could approach it. Another way you could approach it is you just go to the website and then you're gonna start full, in this situation when it's presented to you pretty like this, you can start fooling around with the data and slowly but surely you can kind of figure out what each of those numbers are, you know, whether it's the speed of the CPU or the model number or the amount of RAM um, that the device might have. Now, in an ideal situation, you would get something like this request over here, which is much more structured and much more obvious um, in what it's saying. So it, it's always got a dictionary and it's got each one, so that way it makes working with the data very easy. Either way, you can go up here and then you can click on headers and you can start playing around with these. A lot of these are frivolous and just not needed at all. So you can start unchecking boxes if you want to pare it down. Sometimes you'll see things are interesting. Maybe if you want to play around with like the user agent, uh, either to help anonymize your request to some degree, or perhaps you want to see if it responds with different data based on what device it thinks is making the request, you can do that. Um, additionally, you can go to the body. And here, sometimes you can find potentially interesting information. Sometimes there'll be no body. It's just um, the request URL. Sometimes the body might be something like, you know, give me the first hundred of this or the first thousand of this. That's very fun to play around with because sometimes these APIs, they don't really think about security. So it'll be something like that. And you can just insert, give me the 9 millionth, 999th, you know, and it's going to give you everything in the database uh, up until that point. So that's definitely something to uh, look out for when you're. Uh, looking at these APIs. But once you've gotten something that you th you're pretty happy with, you can go over here and this is what's really beautiful about Postman. You click on code and ta-da, you got a nice bit of code here that's gonna send this exact request. Now, you know, I know Python pretty okay. I don't know 
JavaScript or Ruby at all. And if I wanted to, I could, there we go. I've written some nice Ruby code. So it makes it very approachable, especially if you're trying a new language and you want to implement some API stuff. This is a very easy way to get started with that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Python request and I'm just going to copy it over and then you can use whatever IDE you want. I like PyCharm. It's nice and approachable. And here you can see where I basically pasted this in. Once you have API data, really you can do whatever you want to with it. The, the most commonly useful thing is going to be scraping data, um, but you can also, if you wanted to fool around with uh, in, injecting malicious commands, um, fooling around with stuff like I was alluding to earlier with requesting more information than you're supposed to get. I know I've seen, you know, APIs, for example, might to the end user on the website present things in a um, list with closest things first and farthest things last. But oftentimes the APIs behind that might actually be sending a very precise GPS location of that object or um, a very precise distance. Uh, and when you start fooling around with that stuff, it gets very interesting as well. But let's go back to the lab go, for example. With lab go, for you remember, I didn't have it all associated. So eventually I was able to get it all associated and this is kind of what I came up with. I, I made my own dictionary to help myself. I know I could make better comments, um, but th this was the basics of it. Now, what I have in my Python code here, I'll go over it, forgive me, it's not the most well-documented Python code, but what I was able to create here is a Python program which takes the data from LabGopher, and then it goes through and it parses out some of that data. It's the data I was particularly interested in is not just the price, but the price actually shipped to me. You know, a lot of eBay buyers will try to get you with that $50 shipping. Uh, you don't want to be surprised there. And then also I do some cost analysis where I want to look at the price shipped to me and then try to get the most bang for my buck. So the uh, highest pass mark score per dollar, basically, and the highest, the most memory I can get per dollar. That's what I'm doing here. It's calculating those numbers, and I'm just adding them all up and sorting them out. Eventually, I add that into my own list down here, and then when I run this, I get something like this. So it tells me the server name and then a score and then it even gives me the link to it on eBay. Hopefully it loads. So here we go. We have the server that we were looking at that my algorithm has determined is a great deal. So just to recap here, what did we do? We found an API that we liked, LabGopher, right click inspect, then we find the API call, the request that was sent. We copy it as a curl command. And then we go over to Postman. We can drop it in there with import. Then we can fool around with it until we get um, the desired result. And then we can click on code, get the code sample drop it into Python, and then we can start fooling around with that data uh, using Python. All right, so now we've seen how to use a Chrome or Firefox browser to find a request and then send it over to Postman and use Postman to generate some Python code. Now, that's really useful if you wanna scrape some data from a website or get access to data that wasn't really intended to be seen by the end user. However, we've only scraped the surface of what can be done in Postman. So if you are more interested in that, stay tuned for a future episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode of Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.